the moon and Earth have always been a packaged deal. Even when we couldn't see it lighting up the night sky, it was there exerting some influence on our planet. So, when we started to dig deeper into our solar system, there was one major question we needed to answer. How did the moon come to be? We finally have our answer, and it is more dramatic than you would expect. Let's jump in and find out. In the 20th century, humans achieved what will continue to be one of our greatest feats of ingenuity and exploration. We traveled to the moon. 100 years before that, doing such a thing was considered impossible. The Apollo program was recognized as a technological and political triumph because for the first time, we had a chance to answer some of our most pressing questions about our celestial sibling. What was not appreciated, though, was the 400 kilograms of lunar samples brought back to Earth by the Apollo astronauts. But 50 years down the line, these samples have proven useful in explaining what events led to the formation of the Moon. One of the main goals of the Apollo mission was to find out which of the leading theories about how the Moon was formed was most likely to be true. One theory argued that the Moon was formed along with the Earth and the duo were made up of the same material. This material is the nebula that formed the solar system. Another theory suggested that the moon was formed as an independent object in our solar system, but was caught by Earth's gravity when it wandered too close. The most radical hypothesis proposed fission as the main cause of the moon's formation. The moon was once part of the Earth, but was somehow separated from it because of the Earth's rotation. Because Earth was spinning so fast, some material separated from the Earth early in the history of the solar system and came together to form the Moon. But there were a lot of problems with these theories. For instance, if the Moon was formed in the same vicinity as Earth and had the same materials, shouldn't it have a significant iron core but the Moon does not, and its overall composition is different from Earth. Also, if the Moon was cast off from Earth, specifically around the Pacific Ocean Basin, there should be some sort of fossil evidence showing that the Earth did rotate rapidly at some point. There is none of this either, and the idea that the Moon was formed somewhere else and then captured is completely out of the box thinking and not in a good way. Some force would have needed to act on the moon at the right time, by just the right amount for it to slow down drastically, and that doesn't seem likely. Above all, none of these theories explained why there was extra baking of the lunar surface, resulting in volatile substances like water in moon rocks. However, there is one theory that has more credibility than the rest. The idea was that a small planet, roughly the size of Mars, struck the Earth while it was still very young. The collision didn't affect Earth's core, but ejected just enough debris and heated material to form the Moon. This planet was called Thea, a goddess honored by the Greeks as the mother of the Moon. Even without a lot of evidence, this theory checked a lot of boxes. If the ejected material came from Earth's mantle, and the outer layers of Theia rather than their cores. It would explain why the Moon's core is so iron poor. The energy from such an impact is enough to understand why there was extra heating of the lunar surface and why we found small molecules of water there. In a way, the impact could also explain Earth's rapid spinning in the beginning. This theory was almost perfect and it was hard to believe something like this happened. How was it possible that a planet just so happened to hit Earth in its early stages and form the Moon? If there was ever any collision between Earth and planet Theia, most of the evidence is long gone. The Moon was created 4.6 billion years ago, and thanks to the movement of tectonic plates, our planet has continually reshaped its surface. So, any record of our ancient history is hard to find. But the Moon hasn't changed much over that time. 
Its lack of evolution provides a record of some of the most important solar events over the last billion years and is a window into Earth's primordial history. And none of the other theories were convincing enough to be looked at again. Now, there is new evidence to show that the most unlikely possibility did happen. Hey, Spacers, before we explore more theories on Earth and Moon formations, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the incredible stories about our universe. And now, back to Thea. Although most evidence of a possible impact has faded out of existence, it was still strange that absolutely nothing was found. There had to be some change somewhere, no matter how small, that pointed to the fact that something like this did happen. So, scientists began to dig around for answers, and in the 1980s, one appeared, 1,800 miles below the Earth's surface. Geologists discovered two massive blobs straddling the bottom of Earth's mantle. These clumped materials were close to its molten core and were revealed by unexpected seismic activity. One was below Africa, and the other was right underneath the Pacific Ocean. There are other rocks around the Earth's mantle, but what made these different was how much hotter and dense they were compared to the other rocks. Because of how deep the mantle is, the only way we can research it is to measure how seismic waves react during earthquakes. These waves change velocity and direction depending on what they travel through. So, by piecing together how seismic waves act when passing through materials of different densities in the mantle, we can essentially create a map of the inside of our planet. Seismic waves slow down when they pass through these rocks, and they seem to have been around for billions of years. They were named Large Low Shear Velocity Provinces, or LLSVPs for short, and finding more information about it was difficult. However, new studies show that these materials are remnants left behind by Thea during the collision. To understand why these rocks were there in the first place, Chen Yuan, a Caltech geophysicist, used computer simulations of the impact and the evolution of Earth's interior. The simulations showed that energy from the collision would have melted Earth's upper mantle, allowing dense remnants from Thea to pass through the molten layer and settle at the bottom. Earth's mantle is where most of the action happens. Magma forms there and tectonic plates shift and collide almost constantly. So over billions of years, the materials scattered throughout the mantle must have come together to form the two giant mysterious lumps on the surface of the core. Still, not everyone is convinced. For the materials from Thea to remain so distinct, it means that they somehow avoided being mixed and merged with Earth's mantle for over four billion years. It is possible that some materials did merge with the mantle and others were left untouched, but there is no telling what mixed and what didn't. These clumps might just be hot magma from the early days of Earth's evolutions that formed differently from the rest. But all that's left to do is test this out some more. We still have samples from the moon, and the next step is to compare the chemical signatures of the rocks to that of the moon. If the blobs really are from Thea, then they would have the same or at least similar geochemical signature to show that they are from the same planet. But this is easier said than done. It is impossible to drill deep enough into the Earth to get samples of these blobs. Some materials from the mantle-like ocean island basalts sometimes reach the surface, but to get a true analysis of their similarity, we need samples from the Moon's mantle too. The samples we have here are mostly from the Moon's surface. Years of space weather and meteorites could have affected the lunar surface and maybe changed its composition. So we would have to wait for a sample return mission and visit the southern region of the moon, where the mantle is more exposed, and collect samples from there. But till then, do you believe these cosmic rocks are remnants of Thea? Hey, spacers, what do we think of Thea? 
Can you imagine another planet smashing into Earth? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to check out other videos as we continue to explore the depths of the universe. If you're loving our content, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new and awesome space videos. Thank you for spacing out with us and see you next video.